Hi everyone, Kevin from Total Endurance here. Just wanted to put a kind of really short video together, just something about swim technique and quite a common stroke flaw within swimmers uh, around rotation, kind of the tendency to not use the hips and tend to rotate mostly from their kind of upper back and thoracics. So we've got a swimmer here, generally a pretty decent swimmer, a good level athlete, but one of the things you can see as soon as that hand starts to leave the water, they then have to kind of almost twist themselves to be able to get it clear of the water. And at the same time, what you're going to see is that right arm uh, that's under the water just now is actually just going to slip. It's not going to engage with any kind of water and not going to create much propulsion. And what we see here is the hips are still quite flat. Draw a line through them here. And most of that rotation is coming through here, through the pretty much the upper spine, through the thoracics. Um, twisting. Now if you're really mobile, you've got a really flexible thoracic spine, you can actually get away with this, but you will put a lot more load through kind of the traps and through the neck muscles and you'll not tend to see much propulsion from there. Um, some people get away with it, so it's one of those things that with rotation it depends on a few other factors, but for this particular swimmer, getting more rotation is going to take the load off the shoulder and probably allow them to swim faster. Because what we see here is the hand goes in, it straight away kind of goes down, it sinks, whereas what we'd like to see is that hand extending forward first to ultimately get in the position to generate propulsion and start to use their chest and their lats as that driver. And see here, there's a little bit more turn on the right side, so they are turning a little bit better here, but the uh, hip is a little bit flatter and there's a real lack of kind of finishing the stroke well. There, and as we see in that turn to breath here, you can almost see the kind of on the inside here. Let me just draw the line here. So you can see how there's like a bending movement here happens. So it's like just more of a twist. Uh, so they're going to go a little bit off balance, but they're also then just turning. The head's already lifted up to take a breath. As they turn here, it's kind of like two parts. It's the top half and then the bottom half turns a little bit more to allow them to get a breath. But because of that lack of rotation, they're going to have to turn their neck a lot more. They're going to put a bit of strain on the neck. Tendency from that is you're going to also need to then lift your head up. Uh, and as a result, you press down at the front of the stroke to help you do that. And we'll see this a bit better if we come around the side. And then look under the water. So you can kind of see here. There's no point where the shoulders actually totally clear the water, so there's a little bit of drag going to come from that arm. And they're going to use pretty much the traps and the stabilizer of the neck to get that arm round and out of the water. So we're going to see the swimmer generally suffer from shoulder problems, fatigue in the shoulders, sore shoulder stiffness quite a lot. But in this position here, you can see as the hand goes in, I mean, the hand entry position is good relative to kind of the fingertips going in first, but the shoulders are actually never clearing the water. So as that arm comes round, water is actually constantly pushing against them so they're creating quite a bit of drag here in that position we'd like to see the shoulders be a little bit further out the water probably a little bit better here on the left side because they're taking a breath see that's kind of position you're kind of looking for so because they're breathing they're naturally rotating more but when they're not breathing they're pretty flat so we want to see that level of rotation on both sides all the time um, it's actually going to allow you to get a bit more power in the stroke fundamentally. Again, hand in position is good, but the shoulder is under less strain here because of that turning a bit more to breathe. But we could definitely improve it still on that stroke. Whereas again, coming back onto a non-breathing stroke. And then as we go under the water here, what we'll see is in this position, so we want to see that hip turning. See there's a bit of that arch in the back there, so there's a little bit of load through the lumbar spine. This arm is just pressing down. And because of that, our stroke timing is ever so slightly out. And all that that causes that is just they're not able to extend with this right arm, which means that as they get to here, what we want to see is that right, right arm goes forward. It almost the armpit, thinking about the armpit opening up. And then from there is that shoulder is going to be in a better position to actually get the position we want from the swimmer, which basically is going to be starting in this position here so the hand doesn't necessarily need to be any different in terms of depth of the water it just we want to think about we turn the hip opening up the armpit which then allows us to get what we all speak about quite a lot of the time high vertical forearm or the catch position we end up in this position here so we then have our forearm in the right position as close to vertical as we can get it 
and from there you've then actually got some resistance to push yourself against so the the pressure of the water on your forearm is now what you're going to use to create propulsion um, but because of that lack uh, that lack of rotation the swimmer's pressing down and the arm just slips and it's often a big issue with swimmers when they're trying to go faster they're putting in more effort their arms are moving quicker but the speed doesn't uh, match that so they tend to see that they get frustrated because they put in all this effort and they don't see that instantaneous change in speed for that increase in effort. And it's mainly because their arms are slipping through the water faster. So the analogy I use a lot is that it's like you're on ice in your car, you hit the accelerator, uh, putting a lot more um, power through the wheels, but there's no traction. So they're just slipping, they're going faster and faster and faster. There's a lot of energy being used, but there's no increase in actual speed. Whereas what we need to get first is traction. So it's often with swimming, if we slow down, take take our time with the stroke. We don't want to go so slow that we pause, but we want to get to the point where we're extending, opening up that stroke a little bit more, getting a hold of a little bit more water, and then we're pressing ourselves forward. So something I always speak to swimmers about is that rather than think about pulling your arm through the water, think about pushing yourself forward. So it's when our hand goes into the front of the stroke, if I can get the swimmer to think about, right, in that front position here, so for this swimmer, um, they're going to struggle a little bit with it just because of that arm position. But even if here, if I can get them to think about pushing themselves forward, naturally, they're going to bend a little bit more from the forearm, from the elbow here, and get into that position. And then they're going to engage the chest a little bit better. Whereas to Schnau, because the arm stays straight and they're basically pulling the arm through the water, here, the shoulders, so basically these muscles, the kind of stabilizers, traps around the neck, um, they're actually under tension all the time. They're the things that are actually working hard um, to allow you to keep your arm in that position, to allow you to kind of generate some power. We're never actually using these muscles which is your lats. These are huge, strong drivers. And it's why if you look at any kind of high-level swimmer, they usually have quite a big upper back and it's almost like they have that V shape, mainly because that's what they use to swim. So because they're powering their arm forward and they're generating power through the lats um, from there. So when you think about that, what we so we want to really think about that arm extending forward rather than just slipping through. I mean, they do get it occasionally, this swimmer. I mean, I say this swimmer's not a terrible swimmer by any means. Definitely kind of okay in terms of swimming in triathlon, but can definitely um, improve by just a little bit more rotation through the hip. It's going to make their um, upper back and shoulders be a little bit less fatigued, and they're going to actually be able to generate more power. I mean, generally, body position is okay. But you can see how under the water here, like there, in that position, at no point in swimming do we ever want to be flat like that. We're always transitioning from either side to side. Uh, generally, a, kind of a 90 degree kind of rain. So, like, again, like there's good, that's not bad. Um, but we want to see that go the other way. And not just twisting. So the key thing we get, we need to get this swimmer to think about is trying to keep everything together. So really thinking about creating tension through the torso, through the abdominals, really thinking about doing long um, and trying to think about everything rotates around the kind of spine through the centre axis and getting that movement happen from side to side. Uh, and sometimes the best thing you can do with swimming is to slow it down, not try and go fast. So when you try and go fast, you have to put more energy in, more effort, but you actually go slower. So if we can do a little bit of slower swimming, getting the swimmer to feel that kind of range going a little bit more with the extension, as long as they can keep the the torso engaged that's going to help them kind of get a little bit more power and it's the unique thing with swimming is that our effort doesn't match your speed a lot of the time it's sometimes you've actually got to find that where you generate the most resistance at the front of the stroke and generate power from there rather than just your arms going over quicker uh, hopefully everybody found that useful if there's anybody got any questions about specifically that or anything in swimming in general just uh, give us a shout